With me today I have Mr. James Pants from Stone's Throw Records Stateside. You told me last night that you live in, in, in Denver. So yeah, you... I technically Colorado Springs. If right. We, for the interview we'll tell the real story. It's about 60 miles out of Denver. Okay, and what's that like? Is that quite a small, that's a small place, a town or a village or a, you know, say um, village in America? It's Hamlet. Hamlet. <laughs> <laughs> It's a, it's a decent size. I've only been there a few months, but it's been, you know, I've done this whole record in that time, so I'm, so far it's been, like, an inspirational place. Uh, it's, um, I, I'd say, heavy military concentration. Right. Heavy military, heavy evangelical, uh, megachurch kind of folks, um, and uh, also heavy on the witchcraft community. So it's a very interesting combination. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, how, how do you know it's heavy on the witch, witchcraft? The, the headquarters are there for the U.S. and they have like a section of town that um, is very, it's like all, everything metaphysical on one street, you know. Wow. The bookstores are uh, heavy on that too. You know, I'll be looking at art books and some really crazy art from that community. That that whole realm, it's hard to say just a topic, but that whole realm of the imagery and heaven and hell, and it's always been uh, kind of on my mind. My parents are both uh, Presbyterian ministers, and, right. um, so I've always kind of swung back and forth with, you know, um, in the past, like belief or then disbelief and guilt, you know, and so it's just uh, it's it's always been just of interest to me. So if Stone Throw weren't pressing up uh, 12s and vinyl and all yeah. this kind of stuff, would you, would releasing records mean as much to you? No, definitely not. I mean, it's definitely the physical aspect for me. Um, like, for instance, I've got a digital library, but uh, all those, for the most part, are on record. Or if they're not, I must get the record as, as soon as possible. That was my entire mission from the get-go. Like, my, my life goal was to release a seven-inch record. So, you know, <laughs> Tick. I would like to stick with sevens, LPs, and cassettes, really, for the most part. Just the stuff. And not in a nostalgic way, but I just think those formats are the most special for most people. Um, CDs are okay. But. Yeah, yeah. Have you done a cassette? Yeah, Seven Seals came out on a cassette. Crazy. So it's nice to just hear the little jiggle in the case. And <laughs> I like cassettes, too, in a way, like... LPs because you can't really skip. Albums, there's a flow to them, and you know, CDs a lot of times it's that instantaneous thing. And, mm. you know, I don't like the songs, but you know, with a cassette, you can kind of see how they all fit together. So, James, this is the um, this is your little studio setup yeah. for Red Bull. Yeah. Um, at Red Bull, I should say. Now, talk me through the bits of equipment and what you use them for and why you love them. Well, should we start with the Juno? Sure. This one, I want to say on record, I do not love. Everybody uses this one. You know, the Juno is probably the most boring piece of equipment I have in here. However, a lot of people really love it. Um, it's the classic, you know, you can, uh, early, mid-80s um, R&B keyboard. Um, you know, it's just next to the main mode. It's just the, but the color scheme on it's really good, and the wood paneling. Um, but and the participants really love it. Uh, so you know, a lot of people use this thing. And it's, but um, anyways, that is what it is. You can make some crazy sound, especially through uh, effects. Um, an 808 again. This is like the classic. Uh, everybody wants to play with stuff. So you know, yeah, I had to steal it. And I've actually, this is, the only place I've played with these is at the uh, Red Bull Academy. So, it's always fun. Oh, that's interesting. I would have said that an 808 would be kind of like an essential piece of kit for you. You know, I have a, I have like a compu rhythm drum machine, which is a little before that. And it's kind of the one where you have pre-programmed beats that you can kind of alter a bit. But, um. Yeah, you know, I, I personally try to buy the cheaper equipment and the stuff that uh, most people aren't using just to sound a little different. So, should we pro do you want to program a beat? Yeah, yeah, I mean, we've just got a basic one going right now. But basically, you can just choose, you know, your, all your 
classic sounds, claps and claves and uh, and go to town. Sinister at the same time, so a lot of noise, a lot of you know rumbling. 